<clears throat> Mark chapter 16. When the Sabbath was passed, this would be the Saturday Sabbath. It's Sunday. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome. That's not the Virgin Mary if you're a Roman Catholic. Because the Bible told us that the, the mother of James and Salome was the Virgin Mary. The Mary, the mother of Jesus. But since she remained a perpetual virgin, this can't be her. Because you can't be a perpetual virgin and have children. Unless you have Jesus Christ and that's it. So God in his infinite wisdom of a great Holy Spirit who wrote the Bible and used men as a pen. He said, hey, Mark, write this down. Because you can't have a cross reference to Mary because Mary had no other children. According to her religion. We know she did. So look at that nugget we got there. Mary Magdalene, woman who had, I think it was seven devils, and Mary, the mother of Jesus. What a combination. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, oh, it had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. Remember that when they buried him, they did it hastily because it was the Passover. They wrapped them up. You know, we got we got to get out of here. It's the Sabbath. We got to go eat our Sabbath meal. We got to go have our lamb. And there's a lamb there. Mary held the lamb in her in her arms. Mary had a little lamb. Its fleece was white as snow. In the tomb he laid. The thing about the Passover lamb, they do coat it with oil and, and spices and stuff, yeah. and they cook it. So. They're coming not to see Jesus. You say, well, what are you saying? They're coming to finish the burial ritual. That's what they're coming for. They are not coming to see a risen Christ. We got to go finish the job that we haphazardly did the other day. That's why they brought the spices. And then brought sweet spices. Other religions... They bring spices and food to the grave so the ghost and the, their ancestors can eat. They're not doing it for that. They're doing it to finish the burial of Jesus. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, one more day and Martha would say, Ew, he stinketh. They came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. So it's 6 a.m. They're in darkness walking. To the tomb. The sun is coming up. So it's proper to see the sun coming up that first day of the morning with the women. But then again, you don't take the sun rising as a worship of Baal. They're not having a sunrise service. They are coming to a... Uh, when we haven't finished the check. They're, they're coming to a dead man. They're coming to a grave. The sun happens to be coming up. Problem is, the sun already risen. And they don't know. And they said amongst themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the scepter? Now, wait a minute. Now they're thinking, wait a minute. <laughs> and when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulchre, they saw a young man sitting on the right side. Other Gospels tell us that there were two of them. You say, well, contradiction. No. It's not saying he's sitting on, the, on the, yeah. the rock outside. Depends who showed up, when they showed up, and who they came across. A young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment. That's what we'll probably wear. Long white garments. I'm going to step on my toes. I'm going to say with Dr. Ruckman, what he's about 33 years old. I'll step on my toes with some. I'll say about 33. That, that, that's about the good age. I mean, we're going to be like Christ in every aspect. Long white garment. Now keep white garments away from me right now on the earth. And they were a frightened um, 
Okay, this may have been Jesus. First of all, they didn't recognize him as Jesus. Second of all, the body of Jesus is gone. Third of all, there's a man standing here like John the Baptist's father in the temple. There's two angels that appear another time, and they are like they're on the Ark of the Covenant. One on the right and one on the left. Uh, and then the stone was rolled away. Who on earth moved that stone? Where are the soldiers? They're gone. They're petrified. Yep. Well, according to Mark, this is this first fight, and this brings you back to Zacharias and what John the Baptist fought. Oh, here's a man. You ain't supposed to be here. They were frightened, and he said unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. He's gone. You know what that verse states in all four chapters, all four Gospels? We have come to the end of religion and now begin Christianity. Religion ends with a bunch of women coming to a dead body. Go to Catholic. I've been. I was raised and grew. That's why I picked on the Catholic Church. I was in that mess. You go to you go to church every time you go to church. There's Jesus nailed to that cross. You see people with crucifixes around their neck. Well, he's dead if he's on that cross with nails. He died on the cross. Remember, Pilate marveled. There are religions that they go visit the dead founder, prophet, whatever he is of their religion. There are religions that have relics of dead people in their religion. There are people who say grandma died and there she is walking down the street at McBeef. Christianity is proclaimed by an angel which cannot proclaim the gospel. He is not here. He is risen. We are now in Christianity. We serve a risen God. We serve a risen Savior. Go find that among the other religions. And have proof, by the way. Don't tell me no story while you've been smoking some weird weeds. Or have a sexual desire or have any kind of lustful thoughts like that. Because I'll tell you right now, the Bible says 400 people witnessed Jesus Christ risen. We're going to see some of them in a minute. Give me proofs, proof that can go into any honorable courtroom and say, Your Honor, I like to call 400 people to testify. Uh, after about 10 or 20, the courtroom will say, All right, court adjourned. We don't need anybody else. You know, that was missing when Jesus was brought before Pilate and before the Sanhedrin. There were no witnesses. And the witnesses that there were, they lied. And their lie backed up another lie, which couldn't counteract the other lie. We start off with Mary, Mary Magdalene, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and Mark. They are a witness to the fact that there's no body. But go your way. Ready? Tell his disciples and Peter. Uh oh. A little trouble there. Tell his disciples. And Peter. Peter got in a little trouble by denying the Lord. Open up his mouth too quick, chopping off an ear, running. Peter lied. Lord, I'll never forsake thee. Bye. Oh, I'll never deny thee. No, I don't know. No, I don't know. No. Blank, 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 blank. No. In the Gospel of John, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Oh, Lord, you know. And what I'm teaching here may not be pleasing to other people, but I don't care. That's what the Bible says. And he goeth before you into Galilee. Now take Peter. He was amongst Peter, James, and John. He goeth before you into Galilee. Go tell the disciples, but guess what? Jesus is going to outrun you. Like Elijah did with uh, Ahab. Yeah. 
There, there shall you see him. There shall you see. You can't see him here. You're not going to see him in the grave. As he said unto you, they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Now, when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, count on right, Friday, that don't work. To say Good Friday denies Mark 16, 9. I mean, you know, much of Mark 16 is omitted from this. For you see what we're reading right now. Now, when Jesus was risen early, to verse 20, is missing from Bibles. It's gone. We don't want Jesus raised to be risen the first day of the week because that would ruin our. Our uh, Good Friday festival. Lord forbid God ruins our, our Good Friday. What's so good about it? If that's when Christ died and suffered and blood, what's so good about it? It's good that you can nail God to a cross. Now, when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, got that? He risen on Sunday. He appeared first to Mary Magdalene. Out of whom he cast seven devils. So we got Mary Magdalene, verse 1, and Jesus shows up to Mary Magdalene on the way somewhere. She went and told them that been with him, been with him would be the disciples, and they mourned and wept. First witness. And they when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, Mary Magdalene believed not. The disciples did not believe. Second witness. And that after he appeared in another form unto two of them as they walked and went into the country. That's in John's Gospel. And they went and told it unto the residue. Neither believed they them. You had two people witness to the disciples that they seen the risen Christ. Two or three witnesses, it shall be established, but not when you're a disciple. Afterward, the third witness. You see the scriptures being fulfilled here? Two or three? All right, let's have a third witness. After he appeared on the 11. So he shows up the third time. As they sat at me, an upbraided, charged with uh, wrong, upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart. 652817. That's the disciples. Because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. That's an amazing thing. Because what are they going to go do in the book of Acts? They're going to go preach the risen Christ that they didn't believe. <laughs> you know? There's still hope for someone to get saved. The hope ends when you die. These apostles at one time did not believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ, though people saw it. But isn't it interesting that storm on the sea when Jesus walked, they saw a spirit and were, oh, we see a ghost. Oh, oh we seen Jesus. We seen Jesus. No, you didn't. It's impossible. He's dead. Though, so how many times did he tell them on the third day I'll be risen? Third day I'll rise. Third day I'll be perfected. And yet they never, well, why? Why did, Lord, can I sit in your left hand? Lord, am I the greatest? Well, we're afraid to ask about that, but then they asked some other stupid question. And he said unto them, 
And I'm looking for this note. The disciples, Acts 1, 2. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Now, go. You know what happens next? Acts 1. Jesus says, go in Jerusalem, Samaria, out of parts of the world. Acts 2, Peter begins to preach. Acts 3, I believe, the persecution, they start going out. I mean, not Acts 3 so early. Philip ends up going out. He meets the Ethiopian eunuch. Paul. And by the time you get to the end of Acts, man, the gospel's out to the known world. But this is removed from modern Bibles. Remember from verse 9? 9 to 20 is all removed. So when you meet somebody, hey, Jesus went to do what you did, what you doing? You, they had a modern Bible. Their Bible doesn't say go all the world and preach the gospel. That's remarkable. You know why it's missing? Because they can't understand how Jesus can rise on the first day of the week and die on Friday. Seriously. I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm not making fun of them. How do they how do they get rid of that problem? Well, just erase it from the Bible, not erase it from our thoughts. Now, 15, 16, 17, 18, we'll look when we get done with it. it there's a major problem for them. I can go in all the world and preach the gospel. I, I try to do it here in Daytona. I try to do it with gospel tracts. I try to do it supporting missionaries. Okay? But he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So after you believe, baptism comes next. you got to believe before baptism in the gospel of Mark. After Jesus resurrected, Jesus speaking these words. These words will be read if you got a red-lettered Bible. Unlike the modern Bibles that change the Ethiopian eunuch, that he gets rid of the belief in God and gets baptized. You can't run the cross reference in Mark because modern Bibles remove Mark 16, 9 through 20. Isn't that cute? Isn't that great? That's so we can get saved by water and not believe. Anybody can be dunked in the water. Anybody can be fire hosed. Now today you got just say this prayer. It's deadly. But he that believeth not shall be damned. Notice how baptism is totally missing from that one. If you don't believe, you're damned. D-A-M. Damn. Nothing about baptism. Belief gets you saved. Unbelief gets you damned. But you can't run that cross-reference in John 3 because this cross-reference in Mark 9 is gone. Stop saying that. But it's true. Look at all the cross references that are missing by removing the Bible. Now, 17 gets in trouble. See, I can find somebody that believes and I can baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I can do that. And if they won't listen, they won't believe, they're damned. Condemnation. The wrath of God, John 3. Now I got a problem with verse 17. I can't do 17. I can't do 18. This is why this part of the Bible is thrown out. What do we do with this? What do we do when we want to be a Pentecostal? What do we want to do when we want to be a fire walker? What do we want to do when we have great miracles? And look at all the things we can do. These signs. 1 Corinthians 1.33. What's that say, I believe? Maybe. But well, it says, Jews require a sign. What's the next book in order? Uh, Chronicle order? Acts. Who are the apostles preaching to? Jews. Acts 2. Who's there? Jews. <clears throat> okay? Now, there's a question about these things. But they say James is possibly the earliest book written. Between 45 to 50 A.D. 
Matthew, some say 30 AD, whatever, something like that. Either James or Matthew, I don't know. But we're 30, we're 33 AD, somewhere about. There's going to be another 10 to 15 years before they get any New Testament book. Never mind the entire gospel, the entire gospel, the entire New Testament epistles in the book of Revelation. They're not going to get that yet. All they got is the Old Testament right now. So how do you prove to Jews that these men are who they say they are? Oh, God, I'm not eloquent in speech. You send somebody else. Who made man's mouth? Oh, Lord, they're not going to believe. What's in thy hand? A rod. Duh. Cast it down. Who? Sneak. Put your hand in your bosom. Okay, pull it out. Oh, leprosy. Grab some water. Oh, blood. You know what those signs were Moses were for? Not the Moses can pray it around and sell tickets. Look what I can do. When he goes to the children of Israel, look, God has spoken to me. God has approved of me. Watch. All right. Here's Moses. Look at these signs I can do to prove that God's working with me, that no one else can do it. When does these signs end, six, uh, 17 and 18? When the Bible is complete, finished, signed, sealed, delivered, that's it, no more. When the apostles die, it's sealed. Because after the apostles died, what would you have in your hands now? You would have the Word of God. Now let's look at these things. These signs shall follow them, the disciples, Acts 1, 2, that believe. Verse 14, they didn't believe. How did you know the disciples got right with God? Because those signs that follow them could only happen if they believed. Peter took a man that was crippled and stand up. He stood up. I guess he had to believe in the resurrected Christ, didn't he? In my name shall they cast out devils. They were doing that earlier with Jesus' ministry. Proving who they were. They shall speak with new tongues. Acts chapter 2. They shall take up serpents. Who does that remind you of? Well, even better. Someone who's already Moses. Moses. And if they drink any deadly thing. It shall not hurt them. Wasn't there a time a bunch of prophets sat down for dinner? Somebody grabbed a wild gourd and threw yeah. it into the meal? And Elijah yeah. said something, and the meal put was the, good. Put, the corn meal or so, put something in there. See the Old Testament? Now, you really want to prove these idiots? Do you? Really? Seriously? You want, you want to have the signs of the apostles? Here's some Drano. Drink it. No. I will go buy the Drano. It will be, an un, it will be in a sealed container. You pop the seal before us and you drink it. And when you're laying on a slab in the morgue, it will prove that you're not an apostle. And now my wife mentioned Paul. He's on this island after a shipwreck in a storm. He throws some fire, firewood on the fire and the snake comes and latches on him. And I always, I have fun. I always picture, he's looking at the snake and the snake's just like blinking like, um, they're supposed to be dead. Because everybody thought he was supposed to be dead. Everyone around that campfire looked at him and said, you're a dead man. And then the snake and him looking at each other like, and he shakes it off and puts it off in the fire. A couple years ago, I think they said the world's greatest sh uh, snake charmer got bit by one of the snakes and died. By the way, you want to know how they do that? Magic tree? They file the fangs of those serpents so if they do bite, it won't do you, it won't do you any harm. They abuse those snakes so they're so weak, even if they did attack, they're too weak to bite. Watch out for magic.
And they milk them too. They milk them? You shall take up serpents. You know, and a snake comes up and all that. No. No. You got some dirty trick behind it. And those fire walkers. I wonder if they got neuropathy. Yeah. You don't know what neuropathy is. It's a complete loss of feeling in your feet. I've got it. Certain places. All right. They shall drink any deadly thing. That's the test. And there have been people going up to these these fake healers and stuff like that and giving them a drink. And they, oh no no no! Thou shalt not tempt God. James chapter one. Oh, let's wait a minute. James one is not written. So do it. They shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick. And they shall recover 100%. That does not happen today. Because if you're going to be claimed to be this, this, this healer, this faith healer, you got to put faith in it. Because if it doesn't happen, you blame the person that you're working with. Let, let's go to the hospital behind me. Let's see 100% this hospital will get closed up behind me. Okay? You can do that. I'll believe who you are. Because there are probably people behind me in the hospital right now and this is a little hospital, and are suffering a lot more than I would ever suffer. The doctors have been told them, that's it, their life is done within a certain amount of time. Go over there and start laying on hands. 100%. So then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, the disciples, he was received up to heaven. You find this in Acts chapter 1. Mark ends where Acts picks up. <coughs> they were spoken unto him he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God that's Christianity he's alive and he's with God and is God that's Christianity and they the disciples <laughs> went forth and preach everywhere. Where? Where are we talking about? Read the book of Acts. After Luke and John, Lord willing, we'll get to Acts. You know, they didn't believe Jesus then either. Jesus said, Jerusalem, Samaria, all the parts of You know, Jesus had to send a little persecution to get their butt moving. They stayed in Jerusalem. They went everywhere. So that would include the entire book of Acts. Mark is writing when Acts is complete or thereabouts. Everywhere. The book of Acts, chapter 1, doesn't, it's, they're still in Jerusalem. They haven't gone anywhere. They're at the temple. Acts 2. I think Acts 3 is when he heals the guy. If it's Acts 3 where he heals him, where is he at? He's at the temple. They haven't gone to Samaria. They haven't gone yet. The Lord working with them. Who? The disciples. Okay, ready? 17 and 18 is found in 20 and confirming the word with signs that's what all those signs were to confirm the word of god as moses did with israel and he tried to do it with pharaoh but pharaoh did not believe and the people of egypt many did not believe though the bible records some egyptians did go with them the Bible is not complete. So they, God has to give them something to prove what they are saying and what they are doing to Jews. When Peter deals with Cornelius, a Gentile, Cornelius gives Peter a sign by talking in tongues. Not Peter to the Gentile. Why? Peter is a Jew. The men that were the two men at least with Peter are two, gen, uh, two Jews. God has to prove to Peter and his two counterparts that he is now working with the Gentiles. How? Cornelius gives Peter a sign. And at that moment, when we get to Acts chapter 10, Peter, the light comes on. I guess God is now working with the Gentiles. And he doesn't rebuke it. He doesn't fight it. And he has one little problem later on with the Gentiles, but that's okay. We all got problems. 
these signs, including with Cornelius, to say, hey, I'm of God, just like Moses. And confirming the word with signs following. So the word came first, then the sign. Amen. Some people do the sign, try to do the sign with no word at all. 